How do I solder? So soldering is using a hot iron and solder um, to fuse two objects so that they're still electrically conductive. Instead of soldering, many teams have switched to using Wagos, power poles, or solder shrink tube. There are two main use cases in which you'll use soldering. The first one is soldering wire to board. The second one is soldering wire to wire. Wire to board soldering is pretty straightforward. Whenever you're soldering headers into a circuit board, I highly recommend putting the long end of the headers into a breadboard. It allows you to keep both your headers straight so they're not all cattywampus. I also highly recommend using some sort of fume hood because it's really dangerous just to breathe in solder fumes directly. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is pre-tin your iron. So you're gonna basically put a decent amount of solder on your iron uh, to get off all the old solder and the oxidization. And I recommend using the Brillo pad. It really helps clean off your iron, uh, make sure you have no debris as well as extra solder. You will actually hold the iron on the header for a little bit to get it warm. Make sure you're touching both the round pad as well as the 0.1 inch header. Hold the iron on one side and touch the solder to the other side. You don't actually touch the solder to the iron. That's like a con common misconception because the solder actually wants to naturally flow to the iron. So if you touch it on the opposite side, that'll guarantee the solder actually flows through the circuit, through the connection, and all of that empty space between the two points is gonna be completely filled with solder. Uh, and one common misconception with soldering is that you're gonna like burn the board or something. You're not, just, just hold the iron there. Like you want the solder to soak through both sides and you wanna make sure you have a solid connection. So it's, it won't hurt to hold the iron there for a couple seconds more. It's actually makes a much stronger electrical and mechanical connection. Uh, the right amount of solder can be tricky to do. A lot of people use too much solder or too little solder. You know you've got a good solder connection when it soaks through both layers, as well as when there's like a TP you don't want just a solid blob, like a ball. That actually means you have a cold solder joint or too much solder, and that's not structurally sound or electrically sound. So now we're gonna look at wire to wire. It is very different than wire to board because you have to make sure that the wires are actually aligned as well as you don't have the rigidity of the circuit board to be structural. So you have to use the wires as the structure. And you also have to usually use shrink tubing to reinforce the connection and protect the connection from shorting out with anything. Wire-to-wire -wire soldering has primarily been designed out of first. However, some circumstances you'll still need to solder, um, but I would always recommend using connectors instead. One of the alternative methods is using solder shrink tube. So you start out stripping your wire. You want to strip it so that the glue part, which is the blue, or in the smaller instance, the red or the yellow, is holding onto the insulation but you want to strip it enough so that the wire goes slightly past the actual solder so that the wires are actually overlapping a little bit. You want to twist your wires so that they actually go in all the way. Make sure there's no strands hanging out. All right, so you have them so they're both meshing and the solder tube is over the insulation as well. So any hot air gun would work. I'd recommend using one with a fine tip. So this is a hot air pencil, so you can get like very fine. Uh, and then you're gonna wanna lower your temperature a little bit when starting with. So I'm at like, what, 300 just to melt the shrink tubing and the glue. Uh, and then you'll wanna raise it when you're actually doing the solder. So you'll start with one end, melt the shrink tubing and the glue. That way the solder will not escape when you're melting the solder. The glue will actually turn to like liquid and make it both waterproof as well as make it structural. And like I said, hold in the solder. So now both sides are like actually sealed. And then you're gonna melt the solder directly. You'll hold it on there till it actually turns to liquid. And then you'll slowly turn it so that it all gets melted. One thing to note is the longer the wire you have, the longer the melting process might take due to the wire acting as a heat sink. And then I would also recommend putting more of like a rigid shrink tubing over this, just cause the plastic shrink tubing used on this isn't really for structure, it's more of for just sealing the joint. Common mistakes when using solder tubing is not shrinking the glue first, so that way the solder will escape, or not actually melting the solder entirely. So you want it to, it starts out as that ring, you wanna make sure it's completely gone and you can see the wires are actually bonded. All the solder will liquefy, not just get like mushy. After you finish your solder connection, it's recommended to put shrink tubing over the top of it. We recommend using the same color as the wire um, so that you can actually pass inspection. You want to make sure you get the correct size of shrink tubing for the wire gauge you're using. So in this case, we're using 12 gauge wire, so we'll use the 12 gauge shrink tubing. You want to cover the joint entirely, as well as a little bit on each side. Slip it over so it covers it perfectly. 
uh, and you want to shrink it just so that it's it's actually shrunk but you don't want to keep going because if you overheat it it will actually crack and break shrink tubing is used to increase the structural rigidity of the joint as well as to protect the joint itself um, these solder shrink tubes use a really thin clear shrink tubing that's built in that's really weak so i'd always recommend putting shrink tubing over your solder shrink tubes as well as if you're doing a normal solder joint cover that in shrink tubing as well and i think that's good Soldering is super useful when you want to make an electrical connection. And that is how you solder.